DelicateBeats.com. Hey, welcome back, guys. JT here for DelicateBeats.com. Today we are wrapping up the four-part series on sampling, and I'm going to show you how to chop up samples like DJ Premier. So let's go. All right, so we want to chop up this loop right here. The, the first step would be to use the scissor tool here. You know, choose, maybe that's, that's a fourth of a bar. Let's try that. And by clicking Alt, Command, and Shift all together, it's going to create this cursor with the scissor tool with a plus. And watch what happens when I click here on my marker. It creates even divisions at each of the fourth of a bar. Now we want to create a sampler track, so software instrument, on which we are going to load in an instance of the EXS24 sampler in stereo mode. So now that we have the sampler loaded up, we want to take these sample slices and import them in the sampler so we can play them on a MIDI keyboard. As you can see, I have no edit button here, and I should have one. But with Logic Pro X now, they want to, you know, make it simpler some way, somehow, so they hide some functionality. So you're going to have to go in Logic Pro X, Preferences, Advanced Tools, and here you're going to want to click the Advanced Editing checkbox. All right, and see, boom. The edit button is now back in there. So click on this. And now I'm presented with a MIDI keyboard here and an empty page with no sampler zones. So let's try to select all of these guys here and drag and drop them here in all zones. Now I'm going to get prompted to create contiguous zones. I'm going to say OK. And now see all of the slices here on laid out on the keyboard starting at C1. All right. Now the fun begins. It's time to probably, you know, mute our original track. Maybe I'm going to go back to the original drum loop and we're just going to jam over the drum loop to find a new combination of sample slices that we like. So as you can see, you can waste or, <laughs> I mean, optimize hours of your life trying to figure out a way to play these um, sample slices. The possibilities are infinite. So once you start chopping up and not just looping samples, it really opens up a way, way bigger world of creativity. Now, again, I'm not going to bore you with all my experimentation. I'm just going to record what I was playing, which kind of worked. And we're going to move on to the next step of the tutorial. Before I lay down some drums, I want to show you two other tricks that are very useful. First of all, in the polyphony, you want to make sure that your voices are set to one. By default, it's going to be at 16. But if I move it all the way back to 16 and I play samples repeatedly, you're going to see that they start to overlay. And that creates really dissonance and chaos. So what you want to do is go back to one. And the other trick is to either tick on or off the one shot option here. If I unclick it, you're going to see that it follows the envelope here. And when I release the note, the, start, the sample stops. So for samples like the second one, for example, it's nice to have the one shot because you can make effects like this. It makes it much easier to play on the keyboard. But for this guy here, for example, 
It's really nicer to have the envelope, you know, really cut the volume of the sound when you release the key so that when we have drums in there, it makes it very much more, you know, lock in with the pattern of the drums. Now what I'm going to do is lay down some more drums here because I don't really like in the end the, the drum loop that we had. So just to start with, I'm going to create a very, very simple snap pattern like this and let's listen to what we have <laughs> Let's try this one just for now. And I'm going to lay down a very simple kick pattern too. Don't worry about the kick distorting like crazy. I'm going to fix that later on. It's always a good idea to watch the transients here. See where the kick hits. Make your kick fit with the old sample. work with something like this and by the way don't close this because if you do you're gonna you're gonna lose your um, your samples so just always leave the, this guy open here I'm probably able to minimize it a bit right all right so now with the fun part Let's um, mute the original sample. Let's go back here. And let's play this little something. Okay, so I've created two patterns with the different samples. And uh, here they are without any effects. So that would be the intro. And then I have this verse pattern. So super simple. And um, just to close off the tutorial, because really that's all I wanted to show you today is how to loop and then chop and then replay on a MIDI keyboard um, parts of a sample. Here's what you can do with um, all of that good stuff when you add drums and a few like a bass keyboard, some percussions and then some vocal effects. So from the top,
<laughs> just having fun here. Sorry, guys, I forgot you were there. Um, so here it is, really. You just sample a bunch of stuff, and then you make it, you know, simple enough so that you, you, that you can add some some of your own flavors and keyboard parts and drums and all that. So really, thank you for watching. Um, I hope this uh, tutorial helped you in understanding how to sample in Logic Pro X. Um, if you have any questions, use the comments below and have a great day. All right, peace out, guys.